Hello everybody, my name is Alan, I'm from Cyberlab and today will be another video about exactly Raspberry Pi. In this video we're going to show how you can transform this small Raspberry Pi in your home server and in this way you can run a lot of applications as Nextcloud, Emo and other applications in such a way that you can make this small Raspberry Pi your home server. Of course you need to do some configuration but with Umbrella OS what we're gonna show in this video, you need just a little bit configuration and you don't need it to be advanced any coding or any Linux server based system. So in this way, we're gonna show how you can do it step by step, how you can configure it and what's the minimum requirements that you need to have in order to make everything work. So if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna show in this video, but first of all, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribe for the channel if you're not subscribed yet, and Let's understand a little bit more about it. Before we start to do any installation, anything, we explain what you can do with Umbrella OS. First, you need to understand what you need to have in order to plan yourself. So in my case, I have a Raspberry Pi. This Raspberry Pi is revision four. You can see because I have these two blue USB and this Raspberry Pi have a heat sink. This heat sink is to guarantee that the temperature for my Raspberry Pi is cold enough that it's not overheat and not lose performance. It's really important because once that you start to run more application on Raspberry Pi, this Raspberry Pi could overheat and lose performance over time, so have this one in mind. Next thing that you're gonna need to have will be a SD card. Look like this SD card. This one is 32 GB, not the fastest one, but uh, it's good enough for my application. And in this SD card, we're gonna install the open system. And this one will have the OS and only the OS. But okay, if I wanted to do a NAS or a cloud system at home, I need to have a storage. And in case, we can have an external storage. In this case, it's an external hard drive, but also I can have a laptop hard drive, a computer hard drive, as long as you have the correct adapter, you can have a computer hard drive or computer or laptop hard drive. In this case, this hard drive, it's a one gigabyte. The minimum that is advised for Umbrella OS, it's one gigabyte. So this one work well for my application. Last thing that you need to have, it's a power supply. For my experience, what I see is uh, you need to invest in a good power supply. In this case, it's a proper Raspberry Pi power supply, 5.1, three amps. If you get an undercurrent power supply, maybe they will not perform as expect, and your performance will be depreciate and that you say the Raspberry Pi is not good enough, but it's true that uh, your power supply is not giving enough power for the Raspberry Pi. I'm not gonna comment, but you're gonna need a RJ45 connection, internet cable, to guarantee that this Raspberry Pi is connected to your router. Don't try to do anything using the Wi-Fi because they will not perform as expected. And I'm not sure if Braille OS have this option, so have this one in mind. So now we can jump in the computer and look what the Umbrella OS can do for you and how you can install it. So if you come here my computer, hit the start page for Umbrella OS, where they start to say read your data and explain the own device. In my opinion, a Raspberry Pi look like these ones will work good enough, so you don't need to invest in this specific device. Principally for the cost of $399, consider that the Raspberry Pi you can buy for around £60, so you can save money. If I go a little bit down, they explain a little bit the data set, what they can do, and continue on take control, they explain privacy, what you're buying, but you're not going to invest in this option specific, so I can go down. And here it's how you can set up, super easy. And once that you set up, you can use the umbrella local to access your system. So I come here, this is the page, and here will be the application. If I come here and browse the application, here it will appear what application that I can have. So I can install Llama GPT, I can install Image, I can install Nextcloud, Bitcoin Node, Plex and other applications to make my system usable. Either Octoprint for your 3D printer and continue on. And here you can look for what kind of field of application that you want. If it's financial, it's a media, it's a network, social and continue on. 
So have this in mind, we need to try and see if we can install this application. So if I come here, my umbrella, I go a little bit down and here they give you the information what I need. As I told, this umbrella OS will only work with Raspberry Pi 4. When that Raspberry Pi 5 is available, maybe they will start to work with Raspberry Pi 5. They need a storage drive, as I told, a storage drive. You need a drive enclosure where they will install the OS at least 16 gigabytes. This is the SD for 16 gigabytes, a power supply, internet cable, and a case. You don't need to have a proper drive enclosure if you're using an external hard drive, but if you use one of those, yes, I suggest you to put an enclosure, otherwise you can damage it and no one wants to damage this. Okay, this is requirement for Raspberry Pi. But imagine that I have an old computer and I want to install this application the same way. In this way, you can install any kind of Linux server. If you have a Linux or anything that run Ubuntu or Debian, you can do it. So you can run in a VM, you can run in a Mac, Windows. Only thing that you need to install your Debian or Ubuntu, you have at least a dual core, so a quite old computer run, two gigabytes of run, that's not a big requirement, and one gigabyte of space, run this code and done. You have your Umbrella OS, or you can come here, how to install, and here you can download, you can go for Balena Edge, install Banana Edge, play, and do exactly this. Connect your CD, connect your computer, run Banana Edge, record, install for your Raspberry Pi, connect all your device, plug it, and it's good to go. So now what we're gonna do, we come here in my device, I already flash my USB, so I have here my Raspberry Pi, I will get my SD card, I will connect it to my Raspberry Pi, once that I connect, I can come here and connect my external hard drive. What I need to have in mind, you have a two blue plugs, that is the 3.0, and this one is 2.0. So please go for the 3.0, connect, connect to your external hard drive, this way. Once that you connect, you can stick, you can put in a glue, you can assemble anywhere that you want. Next stage, connect your internet cable, And last thing that you need to do is connect your power supply. And once that everything's connected, you can go there and connect to your network. And that's, we can see what to do. Once that everything's connected, you can go there, connect to your router, connect for the mains, and that's, we come back. Once that your device is ready to set up, you're gonna have this page called Welcome to Umbrella. So now we can put the start. We can call our user, in my case, we'll call as a Sauber Lab, and now we can tape our password. One thing important for you to read is please make sure that you backup your password safe, that there are no way to restart it. So if you lose your password, it's gone, and you don't have any way to find your data again, so remember to save it in a safe place. So you put great, and now your system is set up. You have this like congratulation, and it's now set up. So now, we can put next and here our system. The first time they appear all the kinds of application. So if you want to install any application only click here and put install. And you don't need to wait for finish to install. You can keep browsing and go for next application. Let's go to scale to create a VPN, install, return, and go for other applications. If you're not happy with those applications, you can come here and put view more apps. And here you can choose what kind of app that you want. You can have a production or files as Nextcloud, Calibre, Fire Browser, and other things. You can have a Bitcoin, financial, media, network, social, home automation as home system. Remember, this home assistant works in a Docker, so it's not the home assistant supervisor, it's the home assistant container. What have some limitations, only remember it all and continue on. So in this way you have all these applications that you can install and it's simple. Only choose the application, come, install and it's done. Once that all the application has been installed the correctly way, you can close it and here will start to appear all your applications. You can come here in uh, settings and you can see how much uh, memory that's using. In my case I have one terabyte and use six gigabytes. 
how much run memory that you're using of available usage also you can view how much they're using so it's six gigabytes of the system or i'm using some amount of run memory for the system if you think only 571 megabytes for the system it's not so bad and once that you start to add all others application they will start to use more here is the temperature for my system so it's normal if it starts to go up you should look for a better heat sink or better system to cooling and here more important you need to set up your two-factor authentication it means that if someone try to access your server and have your password they will be able to access and two-factor authentication they will need to have the second code what change for each 30 seconds so it's really important you set up it let's close here and here will be my name and my password that can change and if i want to have a umbrella tour i can only come here and activate it and this way if i open brave and with brave i open the tour options i can only access my server really easy using this brave and here we'll have my uptime my shutdown my restart trouble and everything else also you can set up here the dark mode or the light mode according to your needs so in this way you arrive in the end of this video where I show how you can install Umbra OS, what you need to have, and the basic app installations. If you want to install something else, you can install. In the next video, I hope to be able to show how you can set up this Umbrella OS for get external access and other applications to make your system more user-friendly and you have everything that you like. So I hope that you guys like this video. If you like this video, please don't forget to leave your like. Consider subscribe for the channel if you're not subscribed yet. And see you next time. Bye.